Welcome back to Fit for Life. I am raring to go. And today, well, let's see what you think of this. The name of this show is Why Exercise? Why bother? It can be really boring, I think. But you know, you can listen to music, you can exercise with friends, you can take a class. Find out what can make you want to exercise because it's really important, especially as we age. You want to maintain your independence. That's my number one reason, I believe. Plus, I want to feel good. I want to feel better. I don't feel the way I did when I was 40, 50, 60. You get up, you're a little, you know, a little sluggish. And so the, uh, I think one of the main reasons is to stay independent. Do for yourself, especially if you're living alone. You want to be strong enough to do your ADLs, your activities of daily living. You want to maintain a healthy weight. We do tend to put on weight. And maybe some, someday I'll do a show and explain how that whole process happens as we get older. Um, I don't have the energy I used to have. When I'm exercising, I do. Afterwards, sometimes I get a little tired. Sometimes I even take a nap. But I don't have the stamina. Exercise will help with that, especially your aerobic exercise, right? You're walking, you're dancing and running and pickleball and whatever else you want to do. But uh, again, the walking strengthens your heart and lungs. So you don't get out of breath as fast unless there's another reason for you getting out of breath, which you should have checked, right? But I, when I went back to walking maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago, uh, of course I couldn't walk in the snow, but when that abated a little bit, I did walk and I was, uh, felt like maybe a little out of breath, but as I did it more, that stopped. So it can sometimes help with that. Keep that in mind. Uh, walking improves your brain, makes you th think more clearly. It gets the blood up to your brain, the oxygen. Really, really important. It controls diabetes, not just type 2, but type 1. Both types of diabetes are helped. Uh, it can lower your, your blood sugar. When I walk, I don't even need, need my insulin, uh, not for a couple of hours. Uh, don't try it, but I find I, um, I feel better and my insulin stays down. I'm sorry, my blood sugar stays down. And it does lower your blood pressure, too. It can. So that's important. Many of us are on medication for blood pressure. Um, it increases your strength, as we mentioned in the last class, and it increases your bone density so your bones are stronger. Uh, you may be just at the beginning of osteoporosis, and, and um, strength training can help with that. Talk to your doctor about that. Tell him that you're doing it. He will tell you if, you know, if you're still able to do that. Uh, that you're not in an advanced state of osteoporosis. Uh, I think the beginning state is called osteopenia. So keep that in mind. Um, and it prevents falls. That's the worst thing that can happen to us right now, I think. We don't want to take that first fall. Uh, it also lifts your mood. It relieves depression somewhat. Um, aging doesn't mean depression. But when we do get depressed, like other people, it helps to get outside and look at the green. Look at the green. Um, before we start doing some things, I'm, I call this part of the show today, this and that. We're gonna do a little bit of everything today. And I'm sure you'll get a pretty good workout by the time you're finished. I just wanted to read our thoughts for the day. My experience has been, in a short 77 years, that in the end, when you fight for a desperate cause and have good reasons to fight, you usually win. And that is physicist Edward Teller. Do you know that name? The second one, and I think this is a pretty good one too. Tomorrow I will haul down the flag of hypocrisy. I will devote my gray hairs to wine Oh, not a bad idea. My lifespan has reached 70. Oh, don't I wish. If I don't enjoy myself now, when shall I? And it says, Poet Omar Khayyam from the Rubiat. How do you like that? I found that kind of interesting. Um, first thing we're going to do is warm up a little bit. Let's come forward in the chair and stand up. 
strength, strengthen our legs at the same time. We're going to jog in place. So make believe you're at the park or you're in a place where you can walk without traffic. Just run in place. You can do this in front of your TV set. Do it to music, looking at the screen on your computer. Jogging in place, we did this in the last show too. I try to cram as much as I can. So you can walk, you can jog, you can dance. And just see how you feel. Now just keep doing it as long as you can. If you cannot do this, if it places too much pressure on this area, on your abdomen, maybe you can just march, lifting those knees up. This is good, and almost any movement is good. But sitting and sitting and sitting is bad for your body, your brain, your outlook, everything. Your circulation, oh my goodness. Jog, you still jog, well, we're not jogging. Some of you are jogging, some of you are not jogging. But, you know, try to pace yourself and try to time your walking. When you're at home, if you're jogging in place like this, Try to time yourself. Start at 30 seconds. See how you feel after. And then try to work up to a minute. Maybe you'll do a minute next time. Keep that in mind, but you, you do have to give yourself, you know, a little bit of pressure here. Um, why don't we start with yoga today? Yoga for strength and balance. Now, let's do one of my favorite exercises for strength and balance, the yoga tree. So if this is second position in ballet, first position is here. Your heels do not have to touch. You can open the feet maybe one or two inches and just lift that heel up. Try to keep the knee on an angle rather than straight like this. We can do it. Let's try it straight. Up, down, up. Try to hold it. Two seconds, one and a half seconds and up again. We're just practicing, right? Bend the knees. All right, the other side now. This is just the beginning. This is not the tree. We're just practicing the very beginning. Lift up and down. Up. If you have a good tie shoe and they're tied properly, it will give you a little balance, a little security. It keeps that foot right where it should be from wiggling around too much, all right? Let's do our little knee bend. Now the yoga tree is here. First position again, lifting that heel up. Your knee is turned out. Normally we do it up here, but we're gonna do the hands down here. Good, nice and tall, and lift up just like we did before. Just do one and down, one and down, one and down one and down. Can you do it? Now your feet are turned out, so when you do this little knee bend, we call that a plie, don't we? All right. Let's do the other side. Just lift that heel up. Prayer hands. This is called prayer. Pull the foot in just a little bit. That knee is turned out. If you cannot turn out, if this hurts anything here, just do a straight leg and lift the knee up. We can all do that one, I think, right? All right, nice and tall now. Up and down. Up and down. Just lift that leg up on an angle. Try it again and just do the best you can. If you can balance for two seconds, great. If not, that's okay too, but that is the yoga tree. All right. But while I was doing this, I was thinking of lunging. This is, this is very good for strength and balance holding the hands out just a little bit. Just step forward and bend those knees. Good. Bend them, bring it back. If you need to hold on, it's okay. You're, at least you're moving, you're doing something. All right? And you're gonna step forward and come back. Step forward. Now this looks simple, but if your balance is really off, it's not simple. So we have to work on that a little. Let's try the other side again. So we're strengthening, improving our balance. Try it again. Here, whoopsie, got thrown off there a little bit. And back, let's do the other side, but this time, hands on your hips and come forward. And back, 
and forward and back and forward. I like this one. Watch out for those knees. I can feel this on this side and here. Wonderful. Okay. Now what I'd like to do, I'm going to move my chair to the side here. We're going to try that Tai Chi form. I believe we've done it in the show at least once. And I have to put my back to you, which I don't like to do, but it would be much easier to follow me. If, and just see how much you can do. Remember, Tai Chi strengthens the legs. It's proven that it reduces falls by about 48%. That was the last study, which was a while ago. Maybe things have changed since then. But the last st statistic I remember is 48 to 50%. Because your knees are usually bent. They're bent a lot in Tai Chi. So you're strengthening these all the time. So just try this simple little form with me, okay? Nice and tall though, remember that. You're gonna bring your arms up. Now I'm gonna turn so you can see it's straight out from the shoulder and the palms are facing, all right? Bend your knees and your elbows so you're here now. And make sure that weight is concentrated through the whole foot so you're not back on your heels or too far forward. Straight down. With your left heel, you're gonna step forward. Now watch, lift it up. Just lift the heel up first and plunk it right down. And let's lunge forward like we just did. See this leg in the back? Bring it up. Stay down here now. Your knees are bent. Open and bring the hands here. All right, you're gonna turn your upper body, just the body, not your legs or hands or feet. Lift that right heel up and put it down. You're on an angle. Shift your weight. Keep this hand where it is. Your palms are facing. Describe a half circle. Follow your hand if you can. If not, just look straight ahead. Come back, knees are bent. Open, bring the hands a little bit closer and straighten. What do you think? Can you do it by yourself? No, not yet. Maybe after the second one, let's try it again. But all the while you're strengthening when you're doing that. Tai Chi is beautiful. It's, it's been called meditation in, in motion. Uh, and yes, you do use your breath with that too, because, but because we're not used to doing Tai Chi, I'm not gonna go through all of that. We don't have enough time to teach you, but just don't hold your breath for now, okay? So I'm gonna turn it around, we're gonna do it one more time, just so you get an idea of what it is and how it feels. All right, arms are down, not straight down like this, but a little bit away from the body, slightly rounded. What did we do first? Bend the knee, no, just bend those knees and arms come out straight. Now your hands are like this. They're not here, they're out. Palms are facing, right? All right, now what I forgot to do is bend those elbows, so let's bend them down. With your left foot or your left heel, first lift the heel and just bring it forward. You have to shift your weight. If you have to hold on, grab that chair. Bring the foot up, elbows are still down. Turn just the upper body. Start lifting that heel up. Step forward, or just put the leg out forward. Shift your weight, palms are facing. Leave this right hand where it is. Half circle, follow your hand if you can. Come back, and there you go. Just thought you might wanna try it. You can see where it would be good for balance and preventing falls, can't you? Take a Tai Chi class, try it out. Wonderful. Um, I want to try one more thing before we sit down. All right, now we did this in the last class. I want to do it again, just to loosen up those legs. Good. Just swing your leg. You could do that in a door jam, just holding on and swinging. Just make sure there's nothing in front or back, right? It's a nice little stretch, slightly aerobic. Back and forth, good. Right. Let's do the other side. Standing nice and tall, up and back. So we've done some yoga, we've done some ballet, a little bit of ballet, we've done some Tai Chi, 
We've done jogging in place. Um, as I said, this is kind of a potpourri of, of exercise. I thought it might be time to do something a little bit different, um, a little more relaxed, all right? Uh, I think I said that was the last thing, but you know I never mean that. So stay behind your chair and you can watch me. And we're gonna stretch one more time, stretch all the way down the back. By walking back, you're gonna flatten your back out. You might, if you took the last, um, watch the last show and did this, you should be able to get that back a little bit flatter this time. Flat, flat, flat. All right, bend your knees to relax your legs a little bit. Flatten that back out. I wish I had a mirror here. Bend those knees again. Flatten out. Oh, I can feel that stretch, oh yes. And I can feel myself going a little bit lower. We're gonna walk back up. Let's do the opposite. And this is a movement that we don't do, we, we don't see that much in any discipline, really. Lifting the arm up and do a very easy back bend, pushing those hips forward a little bit, good. And back down again, lift that arm up. And it will improve your posture a little bit too, which is what we are going to do next. Posture is important and I don't think we've done this for a little while, so I'm gonna get my chair back where it should be. All right, grab some water. I didn't give you time to do that today, did I? And make sure that you're not working jeans that don't stretch when you exercise. Just get a stretchy fabric so that you can move more easily. I'm gonna take a little sip. And we're gonna work on our posture a little bit. Do you remember the three letters? And this can be done standing, of course. The Y is first. This part's easy. What happens is though, when we bring the arms up, we tend to do this. But I want you to pull the shoulders down. There's a difference, really. Now, to really get that this opened and your upper back flattened a little bit, you're gonna bring those arms back. It's not as comfortable. It really isn't as comfortable, no. Reaching up and back at the same time. I can even feel that in my, my hip a little bit today. All right, bring the hands together and then we're gonna open again. Open those arms. So you are the letter Y. Great. Come forward though, let's do the opposite just so we can relax a little. Drop forward now. Good. Can you grab your ankles? It feels kind of good. Uh, if you can, maybe your hands have to come up a little bit. Try to flatten your back out here. Flatten that back, good. All right. And then we'll sit back up. Now, uh, I'd like us to do our letters first, so let's finish. How about the letter T? The letter T. This one feels pretty good, straight out from the shoulders. Uh, let's breathe up through the nose. As you exhale, bring those arms back. Now you're gonna feel this one. You're gonna feel the shoulder blades come together. Can you? I can. Does it hurt? Is it uncomfortable? I, I feel my neck tightening a little bit. So let's bring the hands back and just drop that chin right down. Just to stretch the back, upper neck, upper back, I should say. Bring your head back up again. Now there's one more letter that we use, and this is the W. W, elbows down, but really bring them down this time and then pull back. Oh, I don't know about that one. I can really feel that one. Feeling those shoulder blades come together, saying hello to each other. And then we have our prayer hands, good. Let's take a breath up through the nose. Exhale out. And as you exhale this time, drop forward again. Grab your ankles if you can. Good. Does that feel good? Does it hurt? Pay attention to how you feel. 
And if you haven't been stretching at all, it's going to be stiff and you're going to feel something. But most people, um, especially women, know what they can do and can't do. Uh, men tend to, you know, push a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. Pull the shoulders down. You're usually right when you say, well, I sh maybe I shouldn't be doing this or I'm doing it a little bit too hard. So pull. now we're going to put our hands on our knees and pull ourselves up. Look up at the ceiling. Good. And look straight ahead. You can drop, keep those shoulders down. Let's do a little stretch now for the upper back, turning. And then turning to the other side. Good. And then come back to center. But you're over there, aren't you? Let's drop that ear to the side. And then to the other side. Good. Great. Now bring your head up. Drop. Follow me. I'm your mirror. Drop the head down. Oh, that feels good. Just be careful on this one. Don't do a complete head roll. That's not a good idea, especially if you have some degeneration in your neck. Drop your chin down. Oh, something happened. I can hear something in there. And then we'll come back. So that feels pretty good too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, let's try something else too. I'd like you to sit back and then a little bit on an angle. And see this, this arm, drop it over the back. Just flop it over the back of the chair, but turn your head to, in the opposite direction. Hello. Can you feel this open up? The pectoral area, your deltoid, your shoulder. Nice, and it's, can you see where this would be good for your posture? I'm sitting up nice and straight and it feels pretty good. Good, all right. And then just relax down. Okay, let's try the other side. A little bit of an angle. Flop it over. And you can keep going if you want. But to get a better stretch, you're going to turn in the opposite direction. Again, pay attention to how it feels. Do you hear any sounds? Just as long as that head comes back, we're happy, right? Good. All right. Now you're going to come forward in the chair, and we've done this before, and I really like this one. This is a great stretch, too, all the while keeping the back nice and flat. Out to the side. You have to come forward, otherwise, you, you know, this leg gets caught on the arm of the chair. So coming forward, leg out to the side, keep your back nice and flat. Oh, how does that feel? Yes, we like that. All right. Now you're going to bring your back up, this leg out to the side. I'm going to come forward even more. Just sit tall, shoulders down. Just sit there for a few seconds. Keep watching. Good. All right. Now just cave in, round your back. Pull your abdomen in when you do this too. We're going to bring that foot back. We're going to do another yoga move. So I'm going to have you sit back again. Hands on your knees. Pull yourself up like a cat stretching. All right, even arch your back if you can a little bit without, without discomfort. Holding on to your knees, I kind of push against them. Pull myself up, shoulders down. It feels good and you know this is something you could do almost anywhere. anywhere. Um, you wouldn't do it as extreme as this, but you know, you're just sitting around, maybe sitting too long somewhere. Just put your hands on your knees like a lot of people do, and you know, they, no one will know what you're doing. No. Turn your head to one side. And then to the other side. Wonderful. And then we'll come back. Good. Let's just do some wrist exercises, some stretching. Remember what I said today was this and that. Anything that comes to my mind, as long as we're moving, I'm happy. Good. Wonderful. Now, to stretch your bicep, I often wondered how to do that when I first started. You just hold your arm out, palm up. Now you're going to take this hand and just pull back. Pull that hand down. For some of you with arthritis, this might be difficult. So just do what you can do. 
So you should feel a stretch all the way up. Turn your hand over. Now, bring those fingers up straight if you can and pull back and you'll be stretching underneath. Now we haven't been using weights today, but this is a good exercise to do after, you know, for your upper body after strength training. Good. The other side, palm up, just like this. The other hand, pull down. I feel it more, I think, in my lower arm than I do up here in the bicep area. Good. Sitting nice and tall. Turn the hand over and pull those fingers back. Feel a stretch in the wrist all the way down the forearm. Great. Circle again. Two, three, and then the other way. Five and six and seven and eight. Each finger to the thumb. Good, good, good. Do it again. Just keep alternating. Each finger to the thumb. Shake your hands out. Wonderful. Let's sit back and do nothing for a few minutes. I'm going to put some uh, meditation music on just to relax you. And we're just going to basically sit for a few minutes and do a couple of yoga breaths. But you know what I want to do first, quickly? Coming forward now. Again, we're going to do our Grecian stretch as quickly as we can. All right. Reach down to your ankle or your shin, lift the leg and pull it back. If you can just do this one and you want to hold on, just like this is fine, still getting a wonderful stretch. I love this stretch. I think it's very classic and regal to let that foot down easily and switch, sitting up straight, both hands right here. Keep your back straight as you come forward. You won't be able to touch your toe, but you'll get a good stretch. Wonderful. Hold it, hold it. Doesn't that music relax you right off the bat? It's wonderful. Sitting back up, let's do the other side. Foot back. The foot closest to me. That would be your outside leg. Lifting up, pulling back. Holding on to the arm of the chair if you want to. If you want to just do this, that's fine. Nice and tall. Pull that chin in. Can you let go? If not, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Reaching and pulling back. So we're pulling the upper body right out of the lower body. Good. Okay, we'll drop that foot down and switch. Sitting up straight again. Foot in front this time. Toes up. Come forward in one piece. Good, nice flat back. We've got about half a minute left, so I'm gonna sit back now. Let's do a yoga breath together, because this is so relaxing. Breathing up through the nose. Hold and exhale as you come forward. Oh yeah, you did a great job. You did a lot today. Feel good about yourself. You're doing something for yourself and your family too by staying in shape. They don't have to worry so much about you. And then come up nice and tall. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. And we'll do prayer hands. And I will say namaste, which is a greeting, but it can also be a so long for now, too. This necklace I'm wearing is my name in Sanskrit. Yoga is from the days of Sanskrit. And I know I do not know the language, but I know that's my name. So thanks for joining me today. I hope I've relaxed you toward the end at least. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.